Welcome to the Shockwave Therapy Podcast. My name is James Woolwich, Osteopath and Clinical Director at the Abbeyfields Clinic in Suffolk. We will be trying to demystify the concepts of shockwave treatment whilst bringing together experts in their field to discuss the latest research. If you are deciding on whether to add this modality into your clinic or just improve the way you deliver it, then we hope this is the podcast for you. Right, thanks for coming, Stuart, um, on tonight's podcast. I haven't done one in ages, but we've just been at Innovations, which some people might have heard of on this podcast, which is a sort of Venn Healthcare store sponsored weekend. Once a year, we all get together and discuss what's going on. And, you know, we, me and you have been to all five, I think. We've taught at most of them. And, um, I had a few people come up to me, which was really nice, saying, you haven't done a podcast in a while, and I have probably been sidetracked by our other venture, which is ED Clinics, right? So we're doing a podcast for that now, which is based on, you know, men's health and urology and so forth. But I thought that a few people had asked me, and I then asked, you know, what kind of things do you want to talk about? And uh, one of the things that came up after your talk, which was on how to maximise plantar fasciitis outcomes with Shockwave, that I'd, I'd get you on again. For those people that haven't heard you before, you were on this. You must have been my, my second or third person on guest on this. Yeah. Probably some of that, right? Yeah. So, and at that point, had you had your focus device? Um, I think maybe not. I've had it about six years. Oh, so you were you you were ahead of all of us pretty much, right? So well, we did it at the same time. How long ago did yours? I think mine might only be four years ago. I got my focused, or maybe more, maybe five I think years I was ago. The first, now. I was first in the group, but I, I, you were, yeah. Not by a long time, though. No, no. But you, I think when we talked about uh, Shockwave before, which got me thinking with this other guy saying, oh, maybe you should do something on that because plantar fasciitis is the most common thing that we see, right? That if people say Shockwave, they kind of go, ah, oh, plantar fasciitis. And then there's you and I and a few other people spouting on about Peroni's disease. And everyone goes, hang on a minute, you know, everyone's basic case list, you know, for this sort of Shockwave stuff is, is plantar fasciitis, low extremity tendinopathies. So, where we chatted last time, I think we would have been talking back in the old days where, you know, radial was supposed to liven up the tissues, do other sorts of things. And things have moved on a little bit then. And and if you've got focused as well, can you just, because you've taught this a long time, can you just give a quick summary in your mind about what the differences are and how we now use them and combine them even? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I use the radial device more as a scanning device. And for the for the surface area tissue, right. So it, it's it's kind of I use it to cover larger areas. Then I use the actual treatment in my head, the actual focus device. So I kind of combine the two together. But whereas before, when we came on the podcast last time, when we were talking about things outside of plantar fasciitis generally, like kind of first joint neuromas and things like that. Yeah. Now we're talking about plantar fasciitis. I'd have treated. I used to have 20, 21 patients a day, plantar fasciitis at one point. Yeah. And like, you know, I'd treat them all with radio. And, you know, I was getting very good results at that point. Yeah. But, you know, there's, there's no comparison when you've got the two there. You, 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 I kind of use the one for, for the surrounding tissue. And then if the actual pain sites, I use the focus to deliver more. Well, first of all, it's the depth of the treatment is better. But second, the quality of the treatment is better, I feel. Yeah. And okay. also, also all, all the research. The research yeah, yeah, is based yeah. on on focus shockwave at the end of the day yeah and so your your talk at the weekend which which was which opened my eyes a bit so i'm gonna, I'm gonna start changing the way i treat plantar fasciitis on the back of it because i was always a bit i was always a bit dubious about treating the widespread area and you you talked through what you did as a process which was was really good and you also mentioned this this um bit of research where they've done a really good quality rct comparing treating plantar fasciitis with treating just on its own the plantar heel and also combining it with treating the calf. Now, what, hmm. what, just, re, just remind me what that study was. So, the, I mean, the, the, the first study was the fact that the calf actually had an influence on the, uh, the gastrocnemius had a, an influence on the, the foot pain itself. Um, and then, then kind of we're looking at the studies within that, and then the stretching studies aren't very conclusive. So, so yeah, so the stretching kind of didn't show any real significant um you know, there's two free studies out there, meta-analysis that shows that stretching doesn't really help with it. So we do a lot of hands-on therapy. And, I, you know, I have patients who've had sh- uh, plantar fasciitis two years, and I haven't even touched the foot. I treat the calf, and the, it, 
clears up. So, yeah. you know, it, to me, it's pretty obvious the cause and effect. And do, you, um, do, you, do you use just your hands on for that or do you use the radial device as a sort of myofascial treatment? I combined. So I, I scan the tissue with maybe a hands on device like a tool assisted. Um, and then I, I go on with two or three different various fascial techniques, but then I overlay with shockwave as well to break down any fibrosis. You can feel the scar tissue in the fibrosis, and when that breaks down, um, the, the, the symptoms come a lot less. Yeah. So that, that study that was done... I, I, I always explain to a patient, if I pulled your hair here, yeah. it wouldn't hurt here. It would hurt on the insertion. And that's the same paramount to what we're doing when we're doing the plantar fascia. I'm loosening the calf up, which takes the pressure off the down downstream, and then it, it, it then it reduces the pain in the uh, plantar fascia. Right. I think, I think especially when you're going through Baxter's and uh, Castle Tunnel, because I think there's a, a pull on there that then goes and does a referral pain into the heel, which you, which is picked up by shockwave. So you know it doesn't necessarily come up in a scan, yeah, uh, or an MRI, but it's it, the emphasis on the heel can be non-reactive. Uh, with shockwave, okay, that's the way they're complaining. The pain is, yeah. But then you you scan it with a shockwave. I, I scan five, three or four different points, uh, and, and the, 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 is going that into the fo- is that with a focus device now? You scan it with the radial. I will start with radial, and then I'll, I'll I'll check both. But I scan it quickly with the radial. If they jump through the ceiling on a low setting on a, on a radial device, then I take note of that, and then we come back to it next session. So you 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 choose to go back to the calf again. You. You're you're scanning the calf for areas of tension that you say would probably, which makes sense, have a pulling effect down into the, the plantar fascia. But also you're scanning for areas that might be giving referred pain down through into the heel. That's correct. Yeah, there was um, uh, Stenko, a a Seco who does the myofascial stuff. He did a he did a study. And um, can I just reference it because it's not one I, I kind of look at. Yeah, a sure. Lot. And we'll, we'll we'll put put these up into the into the podcast into the writing up afterwards anyway. So plantar fascia, um, so 2021 Tognole, treatment of myofascial points with ESWT in subjects suffering with plantar fasciitis could be an effective treatment offer. So basically he's saying there's a global bio, biomechanical uh, effect in, in, in effect. That's and different that, to the RCT one that you talked about as well. That's just his observations, was it? Uh, well, no, it was a study. Right, okay. It's a random controls, randomised control Oh, so study. that probably is the one I'm thinking of where yeah. he said that with just treating the plantar fascia on its on its own yeah and, and okay. basically came out with favorable results yeah gotcha so in your yeah. in your experience now it's almost standard that that you treat you don't just wait until they're really chronic and they're the ones that are difficult to get better your standard approach is i'm always going to do this through the calf i'm going to scan for it and treat that as well as treating the heel itself yeah i mean the first session i do a biomechanical assessment see what's going on right you know if there's anything outstanding or I kind of ask them to do different exercises to kind of compensate that. Right. And and, and maybe summon them to do with the calf and releasing the calf. Then the the second half of the session and the first session, I scan the different areas and get reaction points. I take note of what the score is on the shockwave machine um, and I write it down the area, the pressure and the machine and the head. And then that's my reference points from when they're starting. Right. And the second session they'd come in, uh, we'd look at the, the second session and we move on to the calf then. So okay. then we've, we spend maybe first 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, a half an hour session. I scan the calf pretty quickly, um, try and break it down depending on how severe it is by different methods of fascial release. Um, I'll put a cup on them normally if I find an area that, 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 that's a problematic, leave the cup on it to do some work while I go and treat some other part, then come back to it and then shock wave it. And then we go to the foot and follow up from the week one. So week one would be then, say, tarsal tunnel sh- showed up quite severe. Then we'd work on that. Now, would you see, because you've been doing this a lot of time, you probably as a podiatrist see, obviously, lots of people come see you for this. But do you, I'm assuming, like the rest of us, if we've got, you know, let's be honest, slightly flashier kit than other clinics and we're experienced, you tend to see lots of other people's failures where they've come to you after seeing three or four other clinicians in your experience now, would you say that the failure in them to get better is more at the fact that they haven't had the biomechanics sorted, orthotics or otherwise, or more because they haven't had a thorough, as in treat calf, treat all the other stuff approach? What would you say is the the common, the more common thing that they're failing on? I, I don't know if it's a combination of the two, really. I mean, I had a patient recently 
seen someone for about three years, two, three years that had PRP injections, steroid injections, and then referred to myself. And like literally two to three weeks, this patient was better. And, and okay, I, I changed center of mass and had the distributing, distributing weight on the foot. Yeah. Uh, and I think, I think that, that has a big part in it. But the reality is, is, is I think, you know, t- when they were doing the PRP injection or steroid injection, they were probably going into the emphasis where they're getting the pain. And okay, it might be showing up in the, on, a, on an ultrasound. But the reality is, is, is when I put the shockwave on the, on the tarsal tunnel, they went through the roof. And also the calf was heavily fibrotic. Uh, the hamstring was heavily fibrotic. So, yeah, it's not even just the calf. You know, if things aren't going my way. Or, the whole posterior chain. Yeah, I, I move up to the hamstring next. Okay. Well, that, that, that brings us on to this, this, the other one that we were just, that we were discussing as well at the weekend um, was this rather brilliant trial done by Dylan Morrissey. And that was in the BMJ, wasn't it? Which was this really nice bunch of RCTs, meta-analysis, combined with interviewing patients about what they thought was the best treatment for their plantar heel pain. And I bring and this up, I, as well. Yeah, an expert opinion, right? So I, I bring this up sometimes when I get a bit frustrated because I'm like you on a few podiatry pan, you know, podiatry Facebook groups and so forth. And every everyone seems to still be, which I know you get frustrated by, they're either in do orthotics, and that's the answer to all things, or equally, there are some people now that have a shockwave device and just shockwave the sore bits, and they're in that camp, and you go, well. All you need to do is look at some really good up-to-date evidence and say that actually what patients want, what experts agree on, what the RCTs all agree on, is that actually focused on all radial devices, because it was it were included in that RCT, weren't they? Both both types, plus a bespoke orthotic, is exactly what you should be doing in combination, isn't it? I mean, does that frustrate you a little bit when you hear those stories? Yeah, I mean, my main criticism of that paper is, is that, you know, okay, all right. If you had plantar fasciitis coming on today, James, what would what would you want to do tomorrow or today? Oh, if I had my if my own heel was sore, yeah, what would you do for yourself? I'd st- I'd st- stick my shockwave on it and make myself an orthotic. So why are we waiting for six weeks? Oh, I see. That's your point. Sorry, I was I was a bit lost there because you yeah. agree the paper's good, right? But- yeah, the paper's good. It looks at. I, I think it kind of takes some pretty low evidence. And kind of gives it clarity, it gives it clout where it maybe not have it. You know, it kind of says like taping is great, um, and that should be a first line. When, when the evidence isn't is a bit really hit and miss, it's not that great. Yeah, uh, less than a week and low low evidence, moderate to low. Then then the same with stretching, the same with insoles. The evidence is all hit and miss. The only one thing that is definite is, is, is the shot wave, realistically, and that's got twenty years of backing from all but isn't, it, isn't it isn't it the combination of you've still got to think about their my biomechanics as well with a with an orthotic yeah, yeah well even the, the orthotics wasn't amazing like kind of the outcomes on that it, it was a, with the night splint it was quite good when you put the two together yeah but then who who wears a night splint well i think my point in it is is that a lot of the stuff is like moderate to low evidence yeah and I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't use it combination therapy is the best you do everything you can because each person might have a slightly different variation on why they've got it so yeah. if you can change that the way they're loading pressures for via an insole or taping or stretching or whatever, yeah. that, that's good. So I'm not saying not use the other things. What I'm saying is is that to me the front line should be the shot wave. The acute, if I had shot um plantar fasciitis, I'd want shot wave on it because it even works better. The studies on acute versus chronic on plantar fasciitis, whereas we all used to do it in chronic six months yeah, plus, yeah. two treatments failed. So it was amazing it even worked in the first place. Let's face it, it had the hardest of the hard cases. Yeah, yeah. It was still succeeding. Yeah. The reality is now we've got we've gone past that. We, the studies out there are showing that the sooner we get at it, the better yeah. the outcome and the quicker yeah. the outcome. Yeah. So I, I don't know why they're kind of putting it at the six week point. I, I I think that was based upon the fact that all of the initial evidence that came out for shockwave therapy, I, I think, was based upon the fact that, that the equipment's quite expensive. And I think they were reserving more expensive treatments for those patients that hadn't got better by normal means within, i.e. people tend to get themselves better, regardless of intervention, within about three months, right? But certainly, I now agree with that, especially those groups of patients where we see for recurrent problems, they come back two years later, three years later, because now we've both done this 10 years plus, they'll come back three years later, but they'll come back two weeks into a new episode, and you treat them then, and they need one session or two, and they're done. And of course, that makes sense, right? But I think that we've so got stuck with the initial trial data that came out that said it's for three months plus, 
I think we've somehow contorted that in our minds to say, well, that that means we can only treat those. No, no, no. All it's all it's saying is that the initial data said you've got to be three months plus because that's where the trial data sat. Didn't mean to say that in six months, wasn't it? Then wasn't it? Maybe back in the day, yeah. it might be longer. But that's not we, yeah. that, that, there was a, it was a suggestion that you've you've got this biological problem that, that is better for shockwave. No, you haven't. It's much easier to do shockwave with someone at Q. It does help having focused shockwave with that, I have to say. But now I treat I treat everything regardless of time. I just hopefully only need to see them once or twice. And then that's that's it, right? That's that, that, Your job is done. Talking of that, the way that things have moved on since our last podcast, what what's your view? I mean, so if you take that plantar fasciitis now, particularly if it's a chronic one and you've got those areas into the calf and the, the heel, the other thing that people still get caught up on is this sort of weird magic number that everyone talks about. It's, oh, two and a half thousand shocks for the plantar heel. I thought your face would do that. So where, give give people a little bit of an update on where we are and our thought process on that. And what do you use? I mean, to me, I I, I, I think I got used the protocol in the first month or so, and that was about it, really, ever since then. Yeah. It's been cause and effect of the patient. You, you kind of follow the patient's pain. If they, you know, if it's four to six pain, you go with it. With the D20, I'm probably looking for 1.8 on a radial. On, on a, 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 what's it name? On a focus, I'm looking for 0. 0.20, 25. And, you know, if you normally you get to that. 0.2 or 0.25 on a plantar fascia. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, it clears up. That's a lot of wincing, I would have thought. I'm not sure I've ever gone that hard. No, no, you, you, you go with the patient. So first yeah. session, maybe it's point five. And how many shocks? How many shocks would you be applying to to, the, to this this group? Um, it depends. I mean, if it's on a lower setting, so say point seven or point ten or something like that, then we're looking at five hundred, and then re, then I'd want to move on or until dissipation of pain. But that what I said to you know, at the start, the two and a half thousand shocks. It, let's say most of the people listening to this have got a radial device. And we did the initial, uh, I think you, did you do some of this stuff on a CERT, a trial back in the day? I was on it, yeah. but I, Right. I, uh, th- then you'll remember that it was all two and a half thousand shocks. Yeah. That was it for each condition. What would you say your average is now? For a, yeah. yeah. What was your average? What What would you say you're now at when you're dealing with a plantar fasciitis? Would you go beyond that? It, it depends. I mean, if, if you've got involvement in tarsal tunnel, plantar fascia, the fascia and the cal- back of the calcaneus, then I'm shockwaving four areas then. Yeah, yeah. I'd probably be dedicating about, and it depends on the movement on how, you know, the, the pain subsides on the patient. You know, like, so I kind of shift between one to the other, depending. It's very much patient-based. Yeah. It's, it's a technique of shockwaving rather than an amount of shots. If I had to say an amount, I'd probably, I'd probably say, because uh, the thing is I'm building up, so say they can only take 0.5, so that's six, 400, 500 shots. Suddenly, they, they, I try it at point seven. Oh, yeah, they can tolerate it now. So that's another 400 shots. Yep. I'd say 2,500, but they're not static at one level, generally. Well, that's, a, that's on a focus device. That's on a focus, on a radio. Like, I'd kind of been looking to scan the area and, and maybe give a 1,000 at most. Right. I don't, I don't really stay long with a radio. So I think I've, I've definitely come to a point where some of those conditions, the more chronic – and particularly with insertional stuff, which we're not talking about today, but you could argue that a plantar fasciitis is an insertional entosopathy, couldn't you? Um, but certainly Achilles tendinopathy insertional, I end up with a focus using it quite often, two and a half, three thousand shocks at about 0.03, 0.05, because they can't take that much energy. And then I'll be radialing the calf and the actual mid substance, probably Achilles for another three, four thousand going on a bit of a journey, like you suggested. And I look back to those old days where everyone's so structured. And the machine settings are, you know, 1,500 shots. That's what you get. And you go, and then you get all these questions, you know, on Facebook, whatever I was going, what should I do? What should I do? And you go, no, just if it takes two and a half, three thousand to tackle all that area around the hill, do that. And Mm -hmm. certainly with insertion or Achilles, I think that you need to do at least six to eight sessions at about three, four thousand each session before I start to get reasonable results because they're so hard to get better. But back in the day, we would have said three to four. Five sessions, maybe fifteen hundred shots. It's very regimented. I mean, but it, it, I said in that in the uh, presentation at the weekend, I said, you know, you look on the internet, and I, I saw somebody saying, well, you know, you can have three to five sessions, and it's not limited. It depends on what the patient needs. Some patients get better in two sessions or one yeah. session. Some patients take eight. You know, you've got to. It's totally patient dependent. To me, you learn how to shot wave, mm. and then you apply it to the individual patient. 
Yeah, no, that's I suppose the point where we we all get to when we get meet meet together. And go, you know, what do you do for that? Well, you know, annoyingly, the answer so often in 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 things that we do is it depends, on it? But um, certainly not getting stuck to this idea of three to five. And I think that's what I what I probably wanted the takeaway from this today to be the fact that since the last three years of or four years since we last time spoke, the idea of treating it in a specific way in the ways that we were taught has now moved on massively to the point where you know, number one go with patient feedback you know patient should lead you to where those pertinent areas are around the hill and uh, if you just go onto the central part of the hill or the medial part you may not be hitting any of those bits that are relevant right um and certainly that that new trial coming out which was compelling about you've got to treat the calf the calf treatment leads to better success with those really stubborn plantar fasciitis problems that's that was the i think the key point from today you've got to treat the calf and and as you know as i think you know you should you should be in the world well, to make sure well, that you're stubborn the the ones that are more stubborn than me that kind of either kind of like I kind of get reduce the pain in the local area, but for some reason they're not quite going. Yeah. Or it generally invariably is like I've missed something. So if I've missed the tarsal tunnel, I haven't been doing that properly. Or the hamstring, the hamstring quite a lot of the times. So what would you can I ask you what, what what's your target within the tarsal tunnel? Do you just focus for that? Uh, like, you think again, you think I, you're treating I, I, the tibialis posterior a little bit or it, it reacts in that area. What, what's reacting, I don't know. I, I think it's potential referral from back nerve, maybe, but I, I don't know that. It, but I know that if you treat in that area, it, it can clear at the bottom or it doesn't did shift. You, did you say you did treat that with focus or did you treat that with radial? Or? I start with radial and I get, I get a feedback. And then whichever one's giving me a feedback, I, I stay with. So if radial gives me a feedback, I, I'll try and shot wave with that. But then if focus gives me a feedback and radial doesn't I'll treat with the focus but I scan with both and then I treat with whichever's reactive I'm assuming that's pretty low low dose around the tarsal tunnel because that's a sensitive old area isn't it yeah but I, I also want to know that that is a problem because I don't want to be I, I want to if it needs treating I want to treat it and I think that's where I've made mistakes in the past I've kind of gone over it been a bit oh half-hearted instead of well is it reacting or isn't it reacting right so I, I normally start with the d21.4 Right. It obviously depends on male, female, size of the app, you yeah. know, the area and stuff like that. But you generally, if you get a 1.4 plus or minus two, you kind of, and you get a reaction, it's something that I want to treat. And that's, that's improved my success. Yeah, you do talk about the tarsal tunnel a lot. Would you say that's the best, the best bit that you've learned over the last four or five years? Sometimes it's, I, was talking, I went on a course with Dave Cashley who does a lot of manipulation and he was saying without any of my intervention that he feels back at the calcaneus sometimes, like lower insertion Achilles even to a degree, but a bit lower maybe, that he feels that so you get you get referral pain from that point. And I, I'd go with that point as well. I think it, different people, different things. There's yeah. some people it's the tarsal tunnel. Sometimes it's the actual plantar fascia, uh, further up on the fascia line. Sometimes it's calcaneus, and sometimes it's just the emphasis where the where the actual pain is. Yeah. Um, but I think if you just choose one spot, you know, I, I, th- I think you know you, you potentially could be hanging around for a long time doing it. Some with some people. Okay. It's very quick and easy to check those areas. You just go over it quickly. Yeah. If it reacts, if it reacts, you go back to it. If it doesn't, move on. Have you got any more teaching coming up this year, or are you done for this year? We've got a low limb specialist advanced course. Um, so that will cover. I've included that what we did last week in the, and I've added a little bit more for the, for the lower limb advanced course, which is the end of this month or beginning of next, I think. It's on the Venn website. And then I'm teaching the Shockwave Essentials as well. Okay. So if anyone wants to know that, then yeah, go to venhealthcare.com, isn't it? Yeah. And I'll put yeah, a link on the bottom of this, but it might, this, this podcast is only going to come out in about a week or 10 days. So people might miss it. But, um, Hopefully they won't. I think it's pretty well booked up. From oh, is it? Okay, fair enough. But, 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 you know, that'd be good if we could have some more. And then I think we've, they've already set up two or three for next year. Of, of the and you're at Therapy Expo with me, aren't you? November? Yeah, uh, yeah, looking forward to it. People can come bother us with the two bull blokes on the stand. <laughs> right, on <laughs> that note, <laughs> I'm going to say goodbye. And you, I'm going to go and have some ice cream. And uh, thanks for coming on again. I'll see you in another four years. Take care, James. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Right, that's us. 